Hi guys, I've uh, got this page here that I'm currently doing, as you can see, it is a work in progress. Um, it's by Sachil Arts, um, which I will link down below uh, for their Etsy. And I think it's a gorgeous page. I have done a previous piece by her, this one, completely different style as you can see for much brighter tropical colors but I thought I'd come on here to show you how I did this lemon because well there's not many lemons in uh, coloring pages but this realistic effect I thought was kind of neat so let's just dive right into it I'll bring the camera down so you can see what I'm doing and I'm going to be using Prismacolors so to start off, I've got cream, PC914, and I'm just going to really lightly base all of the lemon. Just to fill in the two for the paper, I printed this on pretty toothy paper which I didn't think would work for colored pencil actually but it's been a bit of a revelation it works really well with wax I wouldn't use oil on this paper but the wax seems to be working fine now, that's a really light layer you could probably can't even see that much but it's going to just act as a base Then I'm going to go with something much darker. I'm going to go in with yellow ochre. Uh, there's a little bit of grayscale here so you can see where the shadow is meant to be. As you can see, I'm holding the pencil quite far back at this stage. Um, you just want to lightly build up the colour. Now, with, um, if you looked at a real lemon, the top bit at the stalk here is always darker and the bottom bit down here they're always darker Also going to be a little bit of shadowing up here because the lemon is a cylinder so the light is going to hit, be hitting here and here which is going to cause a shadow here and a shadow here certainly in this image well it depends where the light source is but in this image that's where we've got it Okay, next up is going to be a slightly surprising colour, and that's lime peel. But that's very deliberate. If you look at particularly Sicilian lemons, they've actually got quite a bit of green um, in the shadow. And as I wanted this to be semi realistic, that's why I picked up this green. It's um, a re it's not a lurid green though. Prismacolors have a lovely range, pretty natural green, and lime peel definitely has become one of my favourites. And even if it does look a bit harsh at first, remember you are we are going to be blending this out with more yellows, so. Then I can then come back with the yellow ochre. And you can see 
the shape of the lemon is already starting to appear. You'll notice I'm not being particularly careful about my pencil strokes either. That's a conscious effort because lemons have a waxy rind skin. Um, I'm not bothered if there's pencil marks, that's only going to add to the texture. If you look at the one I did earlier, I haven't been um, that precise. I haven't even been that precise blending it out uh, just to get that texture in. Okay, finally, we're actually going to be adding some yellow. So I've got uh, deco yellow here. I'm going to start blending these colours out into one another. camera and I've left a, a highlight this side with the shadow but you can put that in with some deco yellow you don't want the highlight here to be too white okay and then I'm going to come back in with the cream happy with how that's looking. Now I'm going to bring in a really surprising colour, but it does work, trust me. Here's the one I did earlier. I'm going to bring in black raspberry. Now you're probably thinking, what is she doing putting purple on yellow? Well, on the colour wheel, purple is the exact opposite to yellow, and it actually is going to shadow the yellow in a really natural way. Now the trick is to use a very light hand. So either hold your pencil as far back as you can or if you're working down here make sure it's very very light. You can also see I've got this quite blunt, I haven't sharpened this very well and that is to help get as soft an effect as possible. And it looks scary when you're first pulling it down. Because it does look really harsh. But don't panic. As long as you go in lightly, we'll be fine. I'm only going to use this on the really shadowed side, I'm not going to use it up here. You can also see I'm not making the shadow line a straight line. Um, again, lemons are in a regular shape. There's no straight lines in nature. Okay, so that looks, like I said, it looks really harsh. I'm going to come back in now with the yellow ochre. 
I'm using a medium pressure now. Okay, I have lime peel again. As you can see, that's now taken quite the edge off. We're still not fully done. Getting there. Okay. Now, unsurprisingly, I have some bright yellow here. I have canary. You can also use lemon yellow or lemon. Both will work. As you can see, I am going back into that shadowed area with this colour. This is really going to brighten the lemon up now. The only reason I'm getting this uh, dust is because, like I said, this is quite a textured paper. You wouldn't usually be getting this much off a prism. I'm going to come back in with that cream again. I will be bringing in white, but white is more or less the final stage. And you can come over the... Um, the shadow with the cream to lighten up that black raspberry. As you can see, once the purple is uh, blended properly with the yellow, it just looks like a deep brown, but it's a very natural looking brown. Um, one way you can tell if it's a photograph or if it's something you're seeing with your eyes is the shadows. Photographs are, um, just darken shadows to black and grey. And that's not how shadows are. Shadows do have colour. So if you can sort of avoid just using flat black or grey in your shadows, you're going to get a much more um, natural effect. So when I'm um, doing roses, for instance, especially red roses, I'll use green in the shadow. Um, blue is the complementary of uh, orange. And you'll get a much more naturalistic shadow that way. Okay, now I've got my teensy, teensy, wincy white. And this is to come over now, uh, this highlight area. As you can see now, I'm using pretty harsh pressure. Because I want to burnish this now. Burnish that top. I'm going to come around that edge to lighten it a bit. Okay, I'm really happy with how that's looking. I have lime peel again. I'm going to go in quite softly. Just to add a greenish tinge to some areas. Okay, and then if you want to add that um, rind texture, I've done it here. Um, I'm going to use sepia, just because then I don't have to blend out uh, the sepia, I can just go.
you can hear I'm pressing quite hard. Well, I'm being pretty irregular. And then you can also use lime peel as well. That's how you do the lemon, but I'm also going to show you how I did this leaf. So I'm going to come back in with the cream. I'm going to base the leaf. Then I've got lime peel again. Now I'm going to try and avoid these veins because they've deliberately been left quite pale. So I'm going to try and not go over them unless it's going to be where there is a shadow, like here where our hair meets the leaf. So I'm going to do it in sections. There's also a shadow here where the leaf is covered by the lemon. Okay, next up is apple green. When I was looking up lemon leaves, they're pretty they're pretty bright green. So that's what I picked out. I'm not going all the way to the edge of this colour. Not where I know the leaf is going to be highlighted. Now I've got olive green. And that's mainly for these shadows. on the curve of the leaf, even as I put these shadows in. Now I'm going to blend a bit with the lime peel. And now I've got some chartreuse. I'm keeping this mainly just for these edges. I'm also going to now put a layer over these veins. Back in with cream. Okay, and it's 
basically just go back through this set of colours. Until you're happy with the vibrancy. Look, I think it does need a bit more of this apple green. And that is how you do a lemon in Prisma Colour. Well, I hope that was helpful for the next time you are doing fruits, whether that's on a portrait like this or in a basket. Thank you for watching. Well,